Hey, what is going on guys? I hope you're all doing well. Now, in today's video, I will be showing you guys how to install and set up a tool called Tuki OSINT. Now, if you guys are not aware, Tuki OSINT is a tool that gathers information on social media accounts based off of inputs. Now, YouTube, this video is for educational purposes only. Please do not strike me whatsoever. Now, if you guys enjoy this video, please make sure to like and subscribe as it really helps out a ton. So once you guys are ready to get started, we need to go ahead and open up our browser here. And we're going to head, here, we're going to head to github.com slash alfredredbird slash tukiosint. I'll increase that a little bit. Perfect. Now we can go on down here to the bottom. And this is going to be our installation here. So because I am on Linux here, things will be a little bit different for me. We do have a more in-depth installations for Windows and Mac as well on the page here. So if you are on Windows or Mac, you can follow the steps that are right up here. Now for me here, we're just going to copy our URL here, and let's get, go ahead and get started. So we can go ahead and open up a terminal here. I'll increase our screen in just a tad. Perfect. So we can go ahead and we'll type git, then clone, followed by our repo here. So the steps for Windows and Mac should be pretty much the exact same. So you can go ahead and we'll cd into Tuki OSINT here. Oops, perfect. And so now this is when it gets a little bit different for Linux. So we can just type python 3-m and then vin, or venv, virtual environment, and then virtual environment once more. And now if we type ls, we should say we have a venv, a virtual environment, file here. Perfect. So now we need to go ahead and activate our source. So we can just type source, and we'll do virtual environment here, and we'll do bin slash activate. Perfect. So now if you guys are on Windows or Mac, you do not have to create a virtual environment like we did. Now the reason why we create virtual environments is because a lot of the stuff that runs on Linux sometimes uses Python, and by installing our packages globally and not in the virtual environment, they can break system packages. Now, this isn't really an issue on Mac or Windows, All right, so that's why we have to create a virtual environment. So once you're ready, you can type pip3 install-r, it will do requirements.txt. Go ahead and hit enter, and now we're going to wait. Now, once again, this command here should be the same for Mac and Windows. Perfect. Now, everything we do after this will be for any operating system, so we can run this on Mac, Windows, or Linux. So now we can just type python3, and we'll just do tuki osint. Go ahead and let that load here. And now it asks here, do you have a user agent file? I do not. Now these user agent files will allow us to spoof our connections. So we can go to a website and say, hello, I'm connecting from Chrome. And then the next request, we can say, hello, I'm connecting from Firefox. Stuff like that. Just to help get better results. So we'll say yes to install that. Just give that a moment here. Perfect. So now if we uh, we'll expand our terminal just a little bit, you can now see we have Tuki OSINT installed. So now at the time here, we're running version 2.8c, so this is a little bug fix. And we can see that I'm running Linux here. Perfect. So it's going to ask here, do you want to check for updates? We do not need to check for updates as we just installed. Now it says here, join our Discord. Which you guys really should do. The Discord will be in the description down there. So now, perfect. Let's just go ahead and for right now, we'll just skip the target here and we'll just type dash dash help. So we can look at our little help menu. So we've got quite a bit here. We just got some general information on scans. Um, we can see how they work. Uh, we got some information here with working with files and with other scans and proxies, a whole bunch of stuff. So I'm just going to go through just some simple basic stuff. Uh, I will not be showing how to script with Tuki this time. Uh, if you guys want to learn how to create scripts with Tuki, you can go ahead and check that out on the main repository page there. So we'll just go ahead and we'll type clear. And let's just do a basic scan here. So for me, we can just type dash s. It's going to ask here for us a target here because we did not specify that before. So I'll just say Alfred Redbird. Okay, perfect. We'll say yes. And there we go. Look, we got some information here it pulled up. Perfect. Now, if you do want to get a little bit more advanced, what we can do is we'll just run Tukiosent once more. 
say no to updates. I want to specify our username. Perfect. And just for, we'll look at our little attack modes that we had. So, what I like to do is we do dash F for a fast little scan. So this scan here will scan a little bit faster and it will use a list of websites that is a bit smaller. And we'll do dash A, so it will show us all the error codes. And we'll do dash N, so it will show us any not safe for work websites. And we can do just a dash S, plus again. And we'll go ahead and let this come on through. As we can see here, it's keep providing us with some pretty interesting websites. A lot of these here, we can see that there is a possibly not a connection here. So we also get sometimes false positives. As we can see here, youtube.com slash at alphabet does not exist. Well, we know it exists because you're watching my video, right? So that's always why you sometimes want to double check. And that's why I do like to add in the dash A so I can see what we could be missing. Perfect, so we'll clear our screen. Now we can go ahead and sometimes we can specify two different users here. So why don't we go ahead, we'll specify Alfred Bibbard, and we'll do a comma, followed by our next user. Why don't we go with test user, like that. Perfect. So now if we type dash U, we can see we have Alfred Redbird, and we also have test user. Perfect. And so if we type clear, once again we can see our target usernames here, which is Alfred Redbird and test user. Perfect. So this will go ahead and run a double scan on both of us. Now let's go ahead and we'll just check our proxies. So if I type LP here, it's going to ask for some proxies. So I'll say HTTP. And we do not have an HTTP proxy file. If you do have your proxies, you can go ahead and put them into the proxy folder there, which I can show you how to do in a moment. And that way you can go ahead and connect to the proxies. Now we can go ahead and we can type dash ls, and it should print out what's in our working directory, just so we can see files and such. And we'll clear our screen. Now let's go ahead, we'll just tap on dash ec for error codes, and we'll just type dash s to start it. And now let's go ahead and see we are now doing a double scan here. We'll stop this here. So it looks like we're providing some bad error codes we're receiving. Now we also are receiving websites for test user and for myself here, Alfred Redbird, which is pretty good. So we're going to GeoSend once more, say no for updates. And now let's go ahead and we'll just look at our configuration. So I'm not going to go ahead and supply username because we're just going to look at the config. So we can just access the config by typing dash dash config. And we'll say yes to answer that. And perfect. Now we got some options that we can change here. Let's go ahead and we'll just change our color scheme. Uh, me personally, I like the color red. So we'll just go with red. And we'll go back up into the config once more. Perfect. And why don't we go ahead and we can change our language, which we also just added Finnish, the Finnish language, to Tokyo set here. So why don't we go with Italian here? So IT. Perfect. And now if we type dash Q, we can exit. Alright, and now if we run it once more, we can see that now it's in Italian, and our color screen is now red. Amazing. Perfect. Now let's say you want to go ahead and use the web UI. So we can just type Python 3. Let me just do it, dash Tuki, dash OSINT. So let's say you want to go ahead and use the web UI. So we can just type Python 3, and do dash Tuki, dash OSINT, and we'll do dash W here. And we can go ahead and go to this URL, or you can also go to the local address. It's up to you. And boom, we are now here. And many thanks to our amazing contributors. So let's go ahead and increase this window a little bit. So we can go, just go ahead and enter in our username or our target. And we can just do dash F and we'll do dash, yeah, just dash F I think is good. And we'll just hit run here. And it should go ahead and give us a scan. In just a few minutes. Now if you want to be cool, we also have a dark mode. And as well, you're able to edit your configuration menu here from the web UI itself. Now take note that the web UI has a lot less features than just running it through the terminal itself. Now I'm going to show you how to add proxies and how to view your last scan results. So as long as you're in the Tukiosense folder here, you can just type ls. 
and we have here we have proxies and we also have captured so if we CD into captured type LS we can see we have some of our we can see we have some of our old scans that we got here so if I clear my screen we type cat of redbird.txt there we go we now have the list there of just stuff that we captured perfect and now if we CD into proxies type LS see we don't have anything other than headers so if I cat our headers see we got a whole bunch of stuff here. so if you were to go ahead and add in your proxies here you will be able to view them through Tokyosynth. So for now, I'll just type nano, and we'll just do http.txt. I'll say hello, proxy, and we'll save that. And so now if we go ahead and we start Tokyosynth once more, say no to updates, and let's check our proxies. You can see proxy1 says hello, proxy. Now if you do look at the help menu here, Right here, we can see that all the proxies that we do support, we support HTTP, SOX4, and SOX5. And we do not support HTTPS. Now the rest of these stuff here, I am not able to show on YouTube as this could violate their terms and conditions. So I do encourage you guys to look at the wiki, which I will show you. If you guys do need to access the wiki here, we can just use dash dash wiki here. So we'll clear this, I'm gonna do dash dash wiki. Oops, dash dash wiki. And there we go. Let's go ahead and why don't we just look at how to use Tokyosin. And so it gives us here our link. We can go ahead and open this up. And there we go. We are now sent straight to the wiki with a whole in-depth tutorial on how to use everything that we have here. Now you're able to go back here to the wiki and we can get more information here as well as getting it from the terminal. So I'm going to show you how to uninstall Tokyosin. So you can just go ahead, open up your terminal. I'll close this real quick. All we need to do is just delete the Tuki OSINT folder. So if you are on Mac OS or Linux, you can just type sudo rm-rf and we'll do Tuki OSINT. And turn your sudo password. And there we go. Now, if you type ls, we can see that Tuki OSINT is no more. Now if you are on Windows or Mac, you may have to go ahead and uninstall the pip packages that you installed before. If you are on Linux, you can just go ahead and just remove the Tuki OSINT folder and virtual environment and Tuki OSINT will be gone. Like, if you enjoyed today's video, please make sure to like and subscribe as it really helps out a ton. I am planning to make a whole bunch more videos this year, so please stay tuned for that and I will see you guys all later.